In this video, we're going to take a look at remediation in the all-new Adobe Captivate. I've already done a video on multiple choice questions in the all-new Adobe Captivate, but I thought today I would do a deeper dive into a not well-known feature known as remediation. Remediation is the ability for your learner to go back to an earlier part of the lesson if they're failing to get those question slides correct and learn what they should have learned the first time. Very quickly return to that quiz question and then make another attempt, regardless of how many attempts they've made before. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up some slides for this particular scenario here. On slide number one, we have a little slide video about Jake the student and you know we're going to learn a little bit about his circumstances here. I've added a button block down at the end here that includes a next button and a return to quiz button because of course part of remediation is giving our learners a chance to skip all the subsequent slides and return right back to the quiz so they can make another attempt answering the questions that they may have gotten wrong the first time. So we need a couple of things for this slide here. First of all, the next button, we're simply gonna set that up to go to next slide. So that's under the assumption that this is the first time we've arrived on this slide and we're just going to see the next button. The return to quiz is a special button and your instinct might be to simply go to slide and jump to maybe the first question in this particular quiz. But no, in fact, there is actually an action specifically for return to quiz. You'll find it under the more section here and you can select return to quiz. Click done and that's accepted here. The one thing I would like to do is not see the return to quiz if this is in fact the first time we're viewing this slide. So let's click on the hide during publish icon so that that won't show up. But we also need a mechanism to display it or not display it, depending on those circumstances. So we're going to click into the scrap area here and select slide interactions. Click the plus icon next to that. And on slide enter, we're going to check for a condition that is built in to Captivate if we are in quiz mode or not. So in this case here, we need to add that condition to check for. So click the plus icon next to conditions, and we're going to be looking at a variable. Now this isn't a variable like the ones you create. This is a system variable. And if we scroll down, we'll find that particular variable right now. It's actually quiz in scope, as you see here. This icon next to that represents that this is a true false variable. So when I select that, I'm going to check to see if the value of that variable is equal to true. If it happens to be true, we are going to show our return to quiz button. One of my favorite things about the all new Adobe Captivate is that if I didn't remember to properly label my objects on the slide, which you can do, uh, you can visually select which item you're working with here. So we're going to show our return to quiz if we are in the scope of the quiz itself. Now we also need an else statement. So if this is not true, we need to hide that button. So let's select else, select hide. And again, we'll select return to quiz. Scroll down a ways, get next done and then done. So that takes care of the on enter action to determine whether to show the return to quiz button or not. On the next slide, we of course have uh, just a simple next button. So that you would only see this slide if you were going through the course in a linear fashion. And of course, we're gonna go to the next slide here. Select done. Now on to our quiz. So this is a single answer question here. Let's go back up to the visual properties for this particular question slide here. I'm gonna make one change. I'm gonna give learners two tries with all of their questions here. So I'm gonna select the single option and change it to two attempts. If you wanted to double check uh, which answer is selected or make a change, you could either hover over the edit answer or click it 
and make another choice if you wish. But career path is the correct answer for this particular question here. Now, what we want to take care of is what happens when we get the question right and what happens when we get the question wrong or we've used up all of our tries. So we're going to select the interactions icon here and you'll see you've got two options, success and last attempt. Last attempt is running out of tries and you haven't gotten it correct. So first of all, for success, let's just go to the next slide. That's fine in this case here. I'm going to hold off on pressing done and we'll go to the last attempt here. And during the last attempt, we're going to jump to our video slide, giving the learners a chance to review what they should have learned the first time here. So we'll select that and we'll click on done. Similarly, we're going to do the same thing for question two. Let's go back up to visual properties. We'll change the attempts to two tries. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because it's looking for uh, multiple correct answers or multiple answers when combined together equal the correct answer. Again, we can hover over our edit answer button and see that it's the first three answers contribute to the correct answer here. Similar to before, we can select the interactions icon and look at what success looks like. Well, success is go to next slide. But if we've exhausted our attempts and not found the right answer, we want to give them an opportunity to jump back to the Jake the Student video and review that video once more. So we'll go to slide and we'll select Jake the Student here and we'll click done. One thing I recommend that you do is go into table of contents and play bar because we're kind of changing how people navigate through this course, I would advise turning off the play bar so that they only will interact with the controls that you've provided them here, which I've done here. So let's close that. We'll return to slide number one and we'll click preview and see how this works. Okay, so let's play that there. We've got our video where we're learning about Jake the student and we uh, will of course learn whether, uh, you know, what the correct answer should be for the, uh, the questions that we're about to see. I'm going to go ahead and press next. Notice that my return to quiz button is not shown here yet because I haven't been there yet. So we'll click next. Here's our summary. We learn, you know, again, a little bit more information. Click next. And now we're on to our first question slide here. So let's Let's actually choose the correct answer in this case here and we'll click submit. We get the correct message and of course we can press a Y or click anywhere to continue. Now we're on question two. I'm going to purposely get this incorrect both times and we'll choose that. Okay, so we've run out of tries. Let's click anywhere. This returns us to the video where we can learn what we should have learned the first time. But of course, now we have the addition of our return to quiz. Let's click that and see what happens. So what's really cool about the return to quiz, I already got question one right. So I don't need to do that one again. It brings me back to the question that I didn't get right before. And of course, now I can choose all the correct answers and then press submit. And I can now comfortably say that I've learned what I needed to learn and I got 100%. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at captivateteacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.